Hi, this is Professor Paul Knopfler here at UC Davis School of Medicine. I'm a stem cell biologist. I also spend some time each year uh, devoted to educational outreach, trying to debunk things, educate the public. So I'm doing a series of videos about stem cells um, to kind of help in that regard, like help kind of clarify what's going on, check things that seem a little bit sketchy, things like that. So today's video is all about stem cell face cream. And interestingly, when I first started vlogging, this was about 11 years ago, stem cell face cream was one of the first things I noticed that seemed kind of sketchy out there. There weren't really a lot of stem cell clinics back then, but there were these stem cell face creams. So I've written a post about stem cell face creams, including everything from like the cost to like what's actually in the tube. Uh, should you think about using these? Maybe not so much. So I'm gonna jump right in and share my screen and kind of go through this with you so that we can um, uh, kind of come away from this video understanding everything there is to know about stem cell face creams. So this is my site, The Niche. Um, it's really evolved from being a blog, as I said, uh, for over 11 years, uh, now really being too much more than that to having many different resource pages. We also have um, different fact checking and other things going on, uh, hopefully to really help the public understand stem cells better. So as I said, today's post and today's video actually, um, it's all about stem cell face creams. You can kind of go through the article and jump from um, kind of just scrolling through it to actually specific things that might interest you more. So just as a way of introduction, stem cell cosmetics is a really big area. And this ranges from actual procedures that cosmetic surgeons or others might do um, involving stem cells, or at least supposedly involving stem cells to these creams that <clears throat> are being sold for outrageous amounts of money that you're supposed to put on your face or on you know, skin elsewhere, like your arms, to uh, essentially try to make it younger. And so stem cell face creams, we should maybe put stem cells in quotes, um, are really kind of trying to build off the buzz about stem cells. You know, there's a lot of legitimate excitement about stem cells, but just because you slap the name stem cells on something doesn't mean, first of all, that there's even really stem cells in there or that it does any good. And of course, anything, um, that you apply to your face or that you get an injection of or you take as a pill is gonna have some risks. So stem cell face creams, like I said, have been around for a really long time. And even before the FDA really stepped up and started tackling um, the problem of these stem cell clinics that actually inject people with stem cells, they were actually, the agency was actually doing something about stem cell face cream. So it actually sent off warnings um, to stem cell face cream makers um, in a way kind of more uh, aggressively and earlier than it did about clinics, which is interesting. So um, the face creams that are out there that kind of throw the name stem cells on the, the tube or the little tiny vial that you might get um, really break down into two categories and both have reasons for concern. So the first category is stem cell products that actually have something in there related to stem cells that are either human stem cells or animal stem cells and usually when we see these, and, and this is what prompted the FDA warning earlier to a face cream maker, um, I think this was seven to eight years ago, the first time, is that when you have um, things that actually have human or animal materials in them, like for instance, um, when we grow stem cells in a lab, we grow them in this liquid food we call media, they secrete a bunch of stuff into that media. When cells die, their contents kind of drift in up into the media so that condition media, we call it, um, has many different products in it from, or I should say substances in it from stem cells. And um, these could include exosomes, it could include viruses that the cells were infected with, it could include bacteria that got into the cell culture media. So that first category of stem cell face creams, um, and this is the smaller group, um, actually has biological material in it that in some sense is probably a drug product. And so that definitely has risks to it. So for instance, if I have a vial of stem cell face cream that falls into this first category that has human or animal materials in it, like that sort of used up media from stem cells grown in a lab, um, there could be stuff in there that is really uh, concerning. Um, I suppose there's perhaps a greater chance that that cream could actually do something because there actually is stuff in there that, you know, 
could influence, say, the cells of the skin, but I think the risks there are much bigger. So the second and bigger category now are these stem cell face creams that actually have nothing really to do with human stem cells or animal stem cells or anything like that, but they're actually just extracts from plants. And this has really exploded in the last few years. We see these face creams all over Amazon, they're on Nordstrom's, you know, they're just about anywhere you can imagine uh, that you might want to shop for, like even a sunscreen or some other kind of just hydrating uh, cream, you're going to start seeing these stem cell face creams that if you actually look at the label, it'll say something like apple cells or apple extract or um, pineapple extract or strawberry extract. I don't know why, but somehow fruit seems to be, um, maybe because it smells good, uh, seems to be the main source of these supposed stem cell ingredients. So I just drew a satirical cartoon here to kind of think about that latter category, these fruit stem cell products, kind of fact check those, what's the deal? So um, you can kind of see here's a person before and after they use this uh, supposed fruit stem cell face cream. What's really gonna happen, you know, if you put a face cream on, that, you know, you're putting it on like sunscreen or whatever um, that has fruit stem cells in it, you know, is that gonna grow new fruit on your face? So of course, this is a satirical cartoon meant to sort of show um, kind of highlight how it doesn't really make sense that even if there were fruit stem cells in a face cream, that they would really do you any good. You know, there's not necessarily anything about fruit stem cells that would help your face. Of course, you're not going to grow fruit on your face, but I'm sort of trying to highlight how ridiculous this stuff really is. So could these fruit um, and other plant stem cell creams actually have stem cells in them? So the short answer is no. So um, there's a few different categories of these uh, plant stem cell creams. The first category has actually really, as far as I can tell, nothing to do with stem cells at all. It's actually talking about the stem of the plant. You know, we talk about stem cells, but then plants, of course, have these stems, right? And they have branching off of it and they have leaves. So I think some of these cream makers are actually isolating extracts from the stem of a plant and claiming that those are stem cells in their stem cell cream when, of course, that's not the case. More commonly, um, or actually before I jump into that, I guess I would say part of what is sort of, there's sort of a funny twist to this, and that is that the name stem actually kind of comes from the plant stem in a sense, because stem cells can sort of branch as they're differentiating and make different kinds of cells. And you can kind of see that in the stem cell symbol I made a number of years ago. And interestingly, in some other languages, um, the word stem cell, like we say in English, actually translates more like trunk cell. So it's kind of like a tree and then you get the branching. All right, so some of these plant stem cell face creams maybe actually do come from a part of a plant that has some true stem cells in it. And yes, plants actually do have stem cells. They're related to some of the same things that the stem cells do in us. They actually grow parts of the plant. And there's one part of plant called the Mary stem that actually seems to have more stem cells than the rest of the plant. And this is kind of like the growing part of plants. Um, but Mary stem, they, this part of plants is actually, although it's been studied quite extensively, and you can find hundreds of papers about Mary stem and research uh, journals, um, it's not entirely clear, like, do um, strawberry stems have Mary stem in it? And do those have you know, stem cells in it and how many stem cells would be in there. Um, but it's at least possible if a tube of stem cell face cream, again, in quotation marks, lists Mary stem as an ingredient or they mention that on the website, at some point, maybe the part of the plant that they actually isolated to make their face cream might have had stem cells in it. Um, but these extraction procedures probably kill all of the stem cells in there anyway. Do ingredients in plant stem cells versus just say regular old plant cells actually have any potential benefit for human skin? I can't really imagine how it might. I suppose there could hypothetically be something in there, but it, it doesn't necessarily make a lot of common sense to put, put plant stem cell extracts on your face versus say just rub an extract of strawberries on your face that you make in a blender in your own kitchen for 50 cents. <clears throat> All right, so there could be risk to these kinds of creams, especially, you know, going back to that human or animal product related stem cell creams, you know, those definitely, I think, pose risks. These plant ones, there could be risk. We don't really know 
Um, they're not necessarily always going to be regulated very carefully. There's not going to be a lot of data on safety. You know, when, when if you have any kind of question, you're definitely going to want to talk to your doctor, maybe a dermatologist. So in terms of those are kind of potential health risks, there's economic risk here. And that is that these creams are really expensive. So like 100 to $200 for like a little tiny vial. And, you know, while celebrities who pitch these kinds of creams like on Instagram, um, you know, maybe for them 100 or 200 bucks um, for a week's supply of supposed stem cell face cream is not a big deal. Or maybe they get it for free because they're kind of involved in marketing. But for most of us, you know, spending 100 or 200 dollars on a little tiny one ounce or two ounce bottle of face cream, that could really add up into thousands of dollars over a year. And in fact, um, just kind of searching on Amazon for stem cell face creams, I found one that was the equivalent of $5,000 for a gallon of that product. So, you know, a gallon of face cream, that's gonna go a long way, maybe over the course of a year or something like that, but still it just kind of illustrates how ridiculously expensive these things are. So these creams also make a lot of claims, like they're gonna literally make you seem younger, you know, maybe look your, make your face look younger. <clears throat> so I think the Federal Trade Commission and in some cases, the FDA really need to kind of jump in here and do a better job of policing what's going on. These creams, while they're most commonly kind of pitched to make your face look younger, you know, they also will claim that they can make other areas of your skin look better. Uh, so finally, just to kind of wrap up, you know, I asked in this post, this particular post, what is the best stem cell face cream? Um, I've actually seen that kind of search on Google related to stem cell uh, face creams and other creams. I would say there really is no such thing as the best stem cell face cream. If the product is claiming that it has something to do with stem cells, um, you know, I think that's mostly just hype. It's just sort of a, a selling um, <clears throat> kind of gimmick. Again, there could be risk to these things. You know, if someone twisted my arm and said, you know, if you had to pick maybe what's the best stem cell face cream, I would say it's just sunscreen probably because um, we know UV light, you know, the light from the sun that can burn your skin or age it actually can uh, mutate the stem cells in your skin. It can penetrate that deeply into your skin where the stem cells live. It can um, cause wrinkling or other issues. So if you can kind of keep that sun uh, light, that UV light out of the way, maybe that's the best indirect stem cell face cream because it's sort of protecting uh, your stem cells. So uh, with that, I'll go ahead and stop sharing the screen. I personally would not use a stem cell uh, face cream. I'm getting older myself, um, but you know the only thing I think that would be useful, as I said, is probably sunscreen. So I'm gonna wrap it up there. If you wanna read more about this topic, you can go to my site, The Niche at IPSL.com. And I hope to see you next time for the next video in this series. Thanks.